Many of you out in the world are finally getting the PS5 firmware that will allow you to upgrade your SSD that's on the inside of this device. And I've already done a video where I kind of tested the limits of this, but we left that video with me having the wrong part. You see, I ordered an M.2 to PCI Express adapter to see how far could we push the internal storage of the PS5, and this simply didn't work. In that video, I also kind of didn't have the power connected, but I tested it afterwards, and because this is PCI Express, 3.0 it simply does not work but thanks to some of you in the comments on that last video you pointed me to the right object that I needed I had to buy this off of AliExpress but this is a PCI Express 4.0 M.2 adapter to a PCI Express 4.0 slot, which means we can now again try things such as the Western Digital Black Adding Card RAID, as well as something like this 4 slot M.2 SSD on to this setup. So big thanks to the person who recommended this. We're going to be trying it out, seeing just how much storage we can add into the PS5. But I also have a few other ideas that we could do as a follow up to this video if this one happens to perform well. But before we get into covering all this PS5 stuff, let's talk about today's video sponsor. Today's UFD Tech video is brought to you by ASRock and their X570S and B550PG Riptide motherboards. These motherboards are the latest in their AMD Ryzen lineup, and they have things like 10 power phases and Dr. Moss. They include graphics cards holders, lightning gaming ports for reduced jitter and latency, Hyper M.2 with heatsink armor and reinforced steel PCI Express slot, as well as Nehemic Audio and Killer E3100G 2.5 gig LAN ports. And all of that is wrapped in the sleek package of the B550PG Riptide and X570S PG Riptide because it has a fanless PCH heatsink now, so you don't have to worry about hearing the fan on your motherboard ever again. And if you're looking to upgrade to a new AMD system, you can check out ASRock's X570S and B550PG Riptide as your motherboards of choice. They'll be linked in the video description. So before we get into talking about all the SSD stuff, I know I'm going to have a few questions about what's going on here. This is a PlayStation 5 portable model monitor that actually hooks onto the PlayStation 5 using the dedicated slots that a normal just cover has. So this is actually really cool. I'm going to be doing a dedicated video of this coming up sometime soon, but a link for it's in the video description. It's the G-Story 15-inch 4K portable monitor. It's actually really remarkable, and that's what we're going to be using to show everything on the screen here. And I'm going to bring this up because I know a lot of you are going to ask. This is the D-Brand Damascus skin. They do not sell it anymore. You could only get it as a limited time drop. I think it looks incredible, but you can't get this specific color anymore from them. Maybe they'll do a drop in the future, but let's get to the SSD side of things. And also, before we get started, I do want to remind you that UFD Media is hiring. If you want to potentially join us for the channel coordinator position, you can do so at the link in the video description. I'd rather hire a member of our audience rather than just somebody that is picked off the street because I know at least you know what we do here. But with all that housekeeping stuff aside, let's get into the SSD portions. We're here to try out this M.2 to PCI Express adapter, which is then powered by a SATA connector. And I'm not going to be powering that off of the PlayStation 5 directly because I don't know how to hotwire a SATA connector off of whatever power supply the PlayStation has internally. So rather, I have this cheap 450 watt power supply that I'm just going to sit over here that has a jumper cable on it. So it'll activate every time I hit the power switch. And then we're just going to hook that up to the SATA power that's on this device right here. And I'm sure the question will come up, why are you doing this, Brett? Well, who would ever do this? And that's kind of the point. I just want to see what the limits are of the PlayStation 5. I want to see how far can we possibly take this rather than just slapping an M.2 SSD and call it a day. So we've got everything installed. Let's go ahead and flip it right side up so that we can actually look at the monitor. I suppose that's the downside to the portable monitors. I can't access the internals and look at the screen at the same time. So last time this adding card was a 100% failure and I didn't even have this for testing at the time. But to start off slow, I purchased this PCI Express 2 M.2 adapter. So I know this sounds a little ridiculous, but this is just to test the proof of concept. We're going from the internal M.2 on the PlayStation 5 to PCI Express, then back from PCI Express to M.2. So this is simply to test, does it actually recognize the device? Because if it doesn't, well, the video's just gonna stop there and I'm gonna cry and probably never release it. So we're gonna take one of our Samsung 980 Pros, which is one of the officially supported SSDs. I'm just gonna slap it on this bad boy. And there we have the most ridiculous PlayStation 5 SSD setup that you could have ever possibly seen. Let's turn on the PlayStation and we should get an initializing SSD screen on here. We do have at least some sort of power going on here with these lights flashing. I forgot to turn on the power supply. 
I may have needed to do that first. Whoops. No, I did it. What? Holy crap. To use your M.2 SSD, you need to format it. When you format your M.2, all the data on it will be deleted. This is perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. All right, let's go ahead and format the SSD and see what the speeds are like. Oh, crap. Did the PlayStation turn off? That's not good. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. Oh, the PlayStation turned off. This isn't good. Well, I didn't turn on the power supply, the computer power supply, which I now did. Will the PlayStation turn back on? No, the controller's not turning it on. Okay, button works. Oh no. Oh man, I'm nervous. Ah, oh, crap. Uh-oh. I don't like this. No signal. Uh-oh. Okay, the monitor just restarted. The power lights are still on for the PlayStation. I'm hoping it had like an emergency shutdown thing and it's like gonna pop up the screen that says you should have properly turned off your PS5. The SSD is running hot. It keeps like rebooting. Okay, I'm gonna unplug the PlayStation and I'm also going to unplug this entire situation because this is uh, I'm in a pickle right now. I wasn't expecting that. I might also have to unscrew the M.2, but last time that didn't quite matter. Oh, I don't have a brick PlayStation. <laughs> oh man, I was worried. Holy crap. I might have a bricked SSD though. That could, that's a possibility here. We're gonna try it again, but this time I'm actually gonna supply power to this situation. Cause I wonder, um, because I didn't have the PC power supply turned on, was it just drawing too much power from that M.2 slot and it decided that it hated me and it, it just shut itself down. So let's go ahead and find out. No flashing lights on here like we did last time. I wonder if we killed the SSD that's in here. All right, so that's clearly not working. I have a plan B. I wonder, okay, so now comes the question. If I put the SSD just into the SSD slot, will it work or did I kill that as well? I don't smell any burnt silicon, so yeah, we're good. Like that, that seems fine. Let me go ahead and slot in the first 980 Pro. Okay, it is working, so this is not giving us an issue. The SSD appears to be fine. Let's go ahead and format that SSD. All right, that's 100% okay. I can get the SSD installed. Nothing is technically broken. Maybe the adapter died. That's also a possibility. All right, you know what? Let's move on to test number two. So it was clear that the PlayStation can still boot up with this add-on card installed. It just couldn't work when it had this installed on to the add-in card. So now I think I wanna go back to the original plan, which was this Aorus add-in card, which could support up to four or SSDs at once. I wanna go ahead, slot that in. I'm gonna flip on the power. The fan works, so I know at least the PCI Express slot is receiving power at this point. So technically, we're good to go. So actually, when I did this video previously with the Xbox, what ended up happening was all of these lights started flickering uh, to indicate that the SSDs were being registered by the Xbox, even if it wasn't going to show up on the device. But it looks like right here, it's rebuilding the database. It's bringing us straight into the display. It's not receiving this card at all. Nothing. You get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. So initially the thought was that this could have been a RAID card that I could have added into the to a PC, and then I just wanted to try it out here on the PlayStation. But the issue with that is on a PC, it would be software RAID. Whereas with the PlayStation, I'm going to need a hardware RAID solution, which is exactly why I have this WD Black drive. But I also do know that this card if it's only using one of the by four lanes, it's only gonna be able to do it uh, on one of those slots, but I'm not 100% sure which slot it's going to primarily use. So I just need to install drives on all four of the slots and see which one does activate when I boot it up or if it activates at all. Okay, attempt number two, all four drives are currently installed on this. We turn on the power of the power supply and we've got the fan going. So I do know it's receiving power. Let's go ahead, turn the PlayStation on. And again, these LEDs should be blinking if it's registering any of these devices, which it is, yes! It's registering something. So clearly one of these other drives that actually sends the signal to that. It's working here. So, oh, that's a new error message. So it says, can't access your SSD. Try turning off your PS5, removing your M.2 SSD and inserting again. If that doesn't work, try reformatting. We're going to reformat. I want to see what happens here. Reformat the M.2 SSD. I need to know, will it actually read it through this? Because if it does, that is a huge win. Do not die on me, baby. Yes. All right, we got some slightly slow speeds here. We're at 3,200 megabytes per second read when it should be closer to 45 to 5,500. I know these drives are capable of it, but the SSD has been formatted. Can I get into PlayStation? Yes, proof of concept works. Let's go. Oh man, I'm so, yes. Oh, I thought it wasn't gonna work. 
Oh, I had such high hopes. I bought a freaking random adapter off of AliExpress. Like I was hoping that this would work. So now it's just time for me to move this over to a different drive and actually test this out. Last time we did this, we moved Spider-Man Miles Morales, Last of Us Remastered and Returnal. And that was what we tested for the transfer time speeds, which was roughly around the two minute mark. So we're gonna go ahead and see if we get anywhere close to that. Go. So keep in mind, I know that this add-in card is only allowing me to use one of these drives and I would need a hardware RAID card in order to be able to access multiple drives at the same time. But the unfortunate truth about that is that there are not very many PCI Express 4.0 hardware RAID cards. And I was only able to find this one on Newegg for about $650, which is a huge investment in order to make a video that I wasn't even sure was gonna work in the first place. But now that I know that this works, I like, I need to know that you guys are actually investing in this. The videos are gonna perform well and that's gonna take off. So if this video can hit 5,000 likes, I will go ahead and I will buy a hardware RAID card, multiple PCI Express 4.0 SSDs and try to create something like an eight or if there's like, if this video does really pop off 16 terabytes on an actual SSD and see what the PlayStation 5 does with it. Okay, so we just finished that in one minute and 49 seconds. So that puts us at the second fastest time for transferring the games, and that's only four seconds slower than the 980 Pro being on the actual M.2 slot. So we're not introducing a ton of latency here, but I do wanna test game loading times. Uh, it was 35 seconds to the menu, and then roughly five seconds to be in the game last time I tested this. So let's go ahead and do that now. Oh, I have to update it now? Dang it, forcing me to restart my PS5 in order to do this. Okay, great. So that's also good news. After the reboot, everything's working flawlessly. Let's go ahead and see that the game does load right now. It does. The card still being registered. The game loading directly from this PCI Express card. I'm so freaking excited. All right, we're at 34.63 seconds, which is about exactly where the 980 Pro was previously. And then to actually load into the game was 5.23 seconds, which is exactly where we were with all of the other drives. So practically speaking, let me just go ahead and play the game a little bit. Yeah, I'm not seeing any major issues, no pop-in that's happening anywhere. This is just working exactly as I would expect it to. Now, the last thing to do is move the game back to the internal storage so that we can do it the other way. And then this takes about 10 minutes, at least according to the last time I did it. So I'll see you back here in a little bit. 133 gigabytes. Go. Okay, that took about nine minutes and 45 seconds, which is again on par with where the other 980 Pro was. So we're not losing a whole lot of speed by doing this. Let's go ahead and then test out the WD Black RAID adding card and see what kind of performance that we can get here. Now is the, uh, the cool one. So this already has RAID built in. And if I could potentially get this one to work, that would let me know that a RAID card could actually, a hardware RAID card could actually work in the future. The only issue I have with this is that this is PCI Express 3.0 and I could not find a consumer PCI Express 4.0 drive on the market. So let's go ahead and turn on the power supply. Power supply is on, we're not getting any RGB, which means that it's not quite turning on yet, which is fine. Um, see what happens when we turn on the PlayStation. RGB turns on, okay. So this at least is conceptually working right now. Okay, it did not register this at all. Um, hmm, I do have a thought that because this isn't a full 16 lane card, and I know this might sound stupid, but it's the only troubleshooting step that I can think. Because this M.2 adapter isn't receiving a full 16 lanes, it's not registering on the PlayStation. That would be the base level guess I have. So I do have this PCI Express 4.0 uh, extension riser, which would allow us to get you know, 16 lanes on the adapter right here. So that way it has all of the pins contacted and then put the adding card here on this bad boy all the way up here, which I know this is a little absurd. This is less likely to work, um, but I don't have a way of converting uh, the, the eight lanes that it's using to 16, as far as I'm aware. Although last time I thought I knew what I was doing, you guys gave me a recommendation down in the comments. So if you have a better idea than this, uh, of course, sound off, but let's go ahead and see if this works. Let's turn on the portable monitor, turn on the PlayStation. That way we know we've got RGB back on to the SSD. So we know we are receiving power here from the PCI Express slot. Even if it tells me that my SSD isn't supported, that's perfect because that lets me know that it works. No, it will not do that. Bummer. Okay, so this RAID adding card doesn't work, which it's not such a big deal since 
it's PCI Express 3.0. So I'm not terribly bummed here that it's not working. I, I do think that this adding card working was the crux of everything that I wanted to figure out before I dropped the money on a PCI Express 4.0 RAID card. But the last thing I wanna test, which again, I'm not 100% sure will end up working, is because this might be registering as a PCI Express 4.0 device to the PlayStation, what happens when I swap out the 980 Pro for a PCI Express 3.0 drive like this 970 EVO Plus? Will that potentially still work? Okay, we've got the light flashing, which means it's activated. I think it may have been pulling from the first drive here. Can't use the M.2 inserted in the expansion slot because it's not Gen 4. Okay, so it is correctly reading that SSD, which I think is fine. So I'm sitting here ecstatic proof of concept completely worked with this but the Aorus card obviously is not going to work for the reason that it is software based and the PlayStation 5 can't do software raid so I need to buy a hardware raid card to take this even further and then I would also need to buy additional SSDs to take it even further beyond that which again if this video can get 5,000 likes which is not unprecedented in the history of UFD tech if you guys can show the support share this around I will go ahead and I will take this to the next level and I will see what the PlayStation 5 is truly capable of. Can we get 16 terabytes on a hardware RAID solution? Will a hardware card work at all? I don't know. Hit the like button down below. Let me know what you think. I am so excited that this works. I like, I am stoked. I am a huge fan of the fact that Sony is opening up that M.2 slot that is in here. That is a good thing, unlike Microsoft, which locks it down so that you can't even use a CF Express to NVMe adapter. And if you want to see what that saga was like, you can go check out the video we released on Monday, where I tried essentially the same solution on an Xbox, and it went terribly. But with that being said, I'm Brett with UFD Tech. I will see you in the next video, hopefully with more of this PlayStation SSD saga. Cheers.